What do you do if a sponsor pays for a video about a two-year-old keyboard? You make that damn video. Welcome back to the channel. My name is Andy Nguyen and I make custom mechanical keyboard content. Today, we're gonna hop back in our DeLorean to go back in time. Am I a boomer? And we're gonna talk about one of the most successful mechanical keyboards of recent memory, the Keychron K2. If you wanna grab this keyboard, AliExpress, the sponsor of this video, is having a back to school sale on their store. Link in the description below. The K2 was wild because it was funded via Kickstarter, the original group buy site, and raised $110,000 in its first 24 hours. The campaign finished with over $1 million in funding. $1 million. That makes today's group buy seem like child's play. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and watch me on Twitch if I can afford to leave my room. The K2 was endgame for those minimal desk setup nerds, and no one really looked further than that. Until the Rona Nation attacked and brainwashed us all into thinking that kick class could be a great hobby. The dumbest of us even made that their full-time job. 2020 was the mechanical keyboard boom, the big bang of interest, and the birth of Wig Nation. Trust me, this keyboard was onto something in 2020. Mechanical sound and feel, Mac compatibility, wireless. At the time, I was only using a Corsair keyboard. That thing was so there are two things that happen concurrently. First of all, in the normal person space, not weird niche hobbyist, MKBHD thrust the K2 in the spotlight by using it in a lot of his videos. He had a list of must-haves for his first mechanical. Wireless, arrows, no numpad, Mac compatibility, as he was a big Mac user, and RGB. Yes, in today's world, almost every keyboard over 6% has that, but back in 2020, there weren't many options, and those options weren't marketed that well. In the niche space, Teha Types did a collaboration with Tifu in the peak of Tifu's career, and that pushed Keycolt, the number 160, and this like expensive luxury keyboard space forward and tons of people came in tons of gamers tons of young people and we're still feeling the effects today the k2 was cheaper than the comparable gaming keyboards by just enough that you can get a nice little fake plant spot on your desk or whatever the minimalist guys are into for normal people every ten dollar counts keep in mind at this point mechanical keyboards were even nerdier more niche than they are now take the hype of mkbhd the nice price and the ability to have multiple linked Bluetooth devices at the same time, Mac compatibility at the flip of a switch, and you have the perfect storm of a keyboard. I actually had a few high school friends that grabbed Keychrons. They'd even ask me, bro. It's crazy that these days I can suggest all these new products, Iconix, Cave Defense, Epo Maker, even more Keychrons, but availability, wireless, and instant gratification can still pull ahead. Most affordable keyboards that enthusiasts will be into still have some kind of weight or still have some kind of rush to buy, first come, first serve. You gotta wake up at 7 a.m like I'm doing tomorrow to try to get a keyboard. The Keychron is a simple keyboard that has all the keys someone may need and no numpad, keeps it compact, keeps it more ergonomic. You get your full F row, you get your navigation and your dedicated delete key. I mean, there's RGB, but this unit has white backlight. Most people don't even care for RGB, but maybe they haven't seen the light yet. We have here the white backlight Gateron Brown version. This is probably a go-to switch because it's the best for typing because Gateron Blues or Cherry MX Blues are clicky and annoying and you'll piss off your wife. Not that I speak from experience. Light, they're kind of like the gamer switch. So you end up mistyping a lot, but the Gateron Brown is kind of in the middle and you still get that tactile bump, although small, that makes you think of a mechanical keyboard. The board is black, blends in with most dark setups. I mean, you can change the escape key. And it's compact, no space wasted. More desk, more minimal, more aesthetic. The adjustable angle is primarily for those of you who type poorly, but it accounts for that, gives you some help there. Us over here in the custom world are forced to skip some boards if they are too steep or too flat. And Mac compatibility, believe it or not, is important to some people. Some custom boards, like the Win Studios boards, have, for some reason, issues with Macs. They have immense input delay. This keyboard has a switch, so you can change the bottom keys from Windows to Mac without having to change the settings in your computer. Honestly, not everyone is a PC gamer. If you step out, touch some grass, maybe you meet some of them. You would think that 75% layouts are not the most aesthetic and you'd probably be right. But this is more functional because you don't lose any keys. Some people just want to look at the keyboard and press the keys that they need. And the main thing about this keyboard is that if you look at a laptop with arrow keys, those are 75% layouts. And the width of this keyboard will match the width of your MacBook. You can take your Keychron K2 and your MacBook to Starbucks and show people how productive you are. Unfortunately, this does not have a wireless dongle. We are only using Bluetooth, but at least we have Bluetooth 5.1, the latest version. 
dongles are more reliable for all around usage, but if you're using this on the go with a MacBook or another modern thin laptop, there's probably going to be a minimal amount of USB-A ports. You're gonna need a dongle to put your dongles in and no one likes that. Reality is the wireless implementation in aluminum keyboards, especially in the niche, is still a work in progress. Thick aluminum case is what we want, but that thick metal just blocks wireless signal. When compared to custom mechanical keyboards, this keyboard is definitely for a different customer. It's for someone who's gonna grab the keyboard, use it, and not really delve into the hobby. Not gonna bother switching switches, not gonna bother with keycaps. They just want something to kind of top off their setup. Honestly, my wife has been using a custom keyboard that I built her with ticking stabilizers for the past 18 months. I was just curious. I never pointed it out to her and she never noticed or said a thing. The Keychron K2 is still going to stay in my mind as one of the first mechanical keyboards I've seen on the desk of one of my YouTube idols, MQBHD. They may not have the best keyboards around, but damn, they're definitely one of the first and they definitely nailed the marketing. Before we go over here, let's listen to the sound. Sound is fine for the alphas, but the stabs are rattling. So as an enthusiast, there are some tweaks you can do to make that sound better. Thanks again to Alex Best for sponsoring this video and helping keep the dream alive. Their online store has grown so much in the past few years, and you can buy things and have things shipped from domestic warehouses to get them faster. There's so much on that site that other retailers just simply don't have. They have a huge back to school sale coming up. So if you want to buy this keyboard for your sibling, for your friend who just started work from home, or for your mom, check out the information in the description down below. Thanks for watching the video and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching the video. I'll see you in the next one. Peace.